Okay, today I thought we'd talk about the large non-stop robot, also to most collectors it's called the lavender robot. But we're going to talk about how it works, what's inside, and that's what I have down here. But before we do that, if you haven't watched the uh, earlier videos I did on the, you know, let's walk over here. Let's walk over here. In the earlier videos that I did on Robert the robot and all his variations and how he works inside 1954 an electric robot and electric robot and son how they worked and what's inside starting around 1955 <clears throat> they were made in America large skirted robots which pretty much started the craze of skirted robots so as you can see this was Japan's answer to the large American robots, skirted robots, and they made a tin version. It's actually um, cheaper. America led the world in, in plastics and in die cast plastic molding and things like that. And they're really large machines for making large plastic parts. They're very expensive and take a lot of pressure and so on and so forth. Whereas the tin machinery had been around for a long time, they had access to that. In any case, this um, is the lavender robot. There are actually a couple of variations of them. There's ones where the uh, switch is mounted up high, and there's one where the switch is mounted down low. There's ones where a few of the panels are a, uh, a grayer color instead of this color. <clears throat> but this particular one is from uh, the late 50s, earliest one of the earliest ad copy I've seen right so far is like 1959, but I'm sure it probably came out before then. It's a bump and go robot, and there are two D cell batteries that I already put in down there. And uh, what's interesting about the bump and go drive from toys from the 1950s is that they, well, I'll get into that more in a minute. Maybe I shouldn't get ahead of myself. The rear wheels do uh, more than just roll and provide locomotion for the wheels. They're also mechanically linked to the arms to make the arms swing and one of them actually has a uh, flasher contact for making the light in the head flash on and off and basically what we're talking about is just a big bump and go robot and as the rear wheels turn, I can't remember which side, I, guess, I think it's the one on the uh, right side, yep I'm rotating the one on the right side, and you can see I can make the light in the head turn off and on. And uh, they're also linked to the arms <clears throat> to cause movement. It's, it's very random because the wheels, if it's turning, for example, one wheel may not be turning at all in the rear, and the other one would be turning twice as much. So the blinking could be really fast in the head, or not at all. It could stay off, it could stay on, the arms won't swing, you know, like most toys where you go they have forward, backward, forward. Now they'd be independent, so they can swing in a very random way. <clears throat> so what's going on down inside here, where all of the goodness happens, is right here. The battery box, this particular one is in very bad shape, as you can sort of kind of see. And these are the alarm arm linkages, they come up these rear wheels drive an actual gear system, a small gear and a large gear. So as this turns around, this arm linkage piece moves. That may be where it shows up on camera possibly. See I'm rotating the wheel and see how that arm linkage piece moves. But there's also an the contact right here, electrical contact that moves around and that can be used to turn a light on and off. Okay, now what's unusual about the bump and go drive in most 1950s toys is that the motor that drives the wheels in the bump and go drive is part of the wheels. It's all self-contained. Um, pretty much after the 50s, the motor would be bolted to this frame up here, not move, it's solid to the frame. And the only thing that goes down to the wheels is a single rotating shaft. And that way they only had to have one little right angle uh, crown gear in the wheels and still get the bump and go drive. Because when your entire motor unit turns, that means you've got to have a system with a brush 
and contacts to keep power going to the motor no matter where this turns. Now I do have um, I do have a battery pack sitting here with some clip leads <clears throat> so we can play with this, I think. Pretty sure. I'm going to clip that on. This is a 3 volt system. Okay. So here we can see, I'm going to pull you in a little bit. You know what I'm going to do? I don't know if those batteries are weak or what, but it was running and then it slowed down. I think I'm going to actually take this apart and show you the unit in there. Hang on. And there we go. So, in most of the earlier ones, this whole unit, you can actually see the, the motor gear is there, drives this next little gear, and then that drives this gear, and then that finally goes down to the wheels. And they built all that into the bump and go unit. The shaft, being one side of the metal frame, would be one side of the motor, and then this, Piece, which needs to be cleaned up with sandpaper or steel wool is the contact for the other side. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can make some sort of contact here. Here we go. So you can see how they get the power to that and everything drives. <clears throat> it's more complicated. And up here, here is the brush that rubs on this side to make that other electrical contact when the whole thing is put together. In this case I'm holding it together with, um, normally there had been a washer and then it was crimped. But because it had to be taken apart to be worked on at one point, I'm holding it together with a piece of uh, tubing and a washer for right now for our explanation. So now you know what's going on inside the giant non-stop robot made in Japan and influenced by Robert the Robot and by Electric Robot and Son. Just a bump and go.